Well, right now, Texas is at the center of the battle over religion in public schools. But it's not the job of public schools to be indoctrinating young children. Implementing this would alienate some students possibly some teachers. Um, it could it could affect even um, teacher recruitment and teacher retention if they're forced to have to teach this curriculum. They're selling our kids souls for $60. They're purchasing their influence. That's all they, they feel that they're worth. They think that if they dangle money in the face, they desire to make America ca -ca great again to give the power back to a certain group of individuals and they are targeting and doing this to the kids on purpose the next generation Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Blue. We're here. We're back with another video. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. But before we do that, I just wanted to say I haven't had a couple of videos uploaded because this past weekend I went to Jersey. I saw my family. My family saw me. My daughter saw my family and my family saw my daughter. Everybody enjoyed it. It was a great time of all my family. I love that they were able to see my daughter and that she was meshing with them really well. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So also this weekend that was happening, apparently Texas is switching up their laws. It's going to be very interesting. I was, I had, my views has switched. I was for it. And then I'm like, eh, I don't know if this is a good thing. And then I was against it. Let's see how this plays out. So once again, I get all my information from ground.news. Ground.news is what we're going to be using as far as getting our basis of what's happening in the world before we go out here and check all these other videos, all these different sites and, and TikTokers and all this stuff. This is where we're going to get our facts and we're going to progress from there. So what's happening is that Texas Education Board approves optional Bible infused curriculum for elementary schools, uh, hence approves optional Bible infused curriculum. So don't think there's going to be, you know, emerging of the church in the state like it used to be back in old times, or at least not yet. But we'll see how this goes. So Texas Education Board has approved optional Bible infused teaching in elementary schools following the trends of other Republican led states. So from what I recall, the other states are essentially, let's say like, uh, I think it's Louisiana, they're trying to allow the 10 commandments to be in the classrooms, in all the classrooms and stuff like that. So I think this is kind of Texas's way of kind of going along that same route and honestly it seems like if they're continuing with this then this could be this could be emerging the church and state like they used to be back in the day i don't know let's see governor greg abbott supports a new lesson plans and which schools can adopt for additional funding now, this is the interesting part we'll talk about that later texas will offer 60 dollars per student to districts adopting the bible curriculum with potential classroom implementation next school year to me the interesting thing about all that when we think about the situation i can see a lot of issues merging the well kind of the church and the state and when it comes to the bible when i was in high school i'm um, honestly yeah most of my high school in my world history classes and even in college they talked about the different religions they talked about christianity as a religion and talked about judaism they talked about muslim and they talked about hindu and all that stuff and they gave the basis of where they kind of originated from which honestly now that i think about it what comes to christianity they didn't they weren't really specific on where it originated from and their leaders who they believe in and kind of the changes that has happened over the years in said religions that's kind of the basis of all the religions um i think they can expand on a lot of those yes the thing that's happening now is that in america America, who's uh, as a lot of people, you know, especially Republicans would say they're founded off of Christian beliefs, Christian beliefs, some of the, a lot of the beliefs that happen in the Bible and moralities that had that are taught in the Bible, then it should be taught in the schools where we get our beliefs from and such. And again, I guess in a sense, help kind of navigates the pathway of these students and their learning. Because honestly, even if I wasn't a Christian, even a lot of people that are atheists and such, they're, they can't tell me that a lot of their morality doesn't come from the Bible. They may not want to believe it, but a lot of things that they believe, which is morally wrong or morally just, and just being kind and stuff like that. These are all principles that are taught in the Bible. They're taught 
taught in Hinduism as well and stuff like that. But a lot of it comes from the Bible, a lot of which that American parents teach their kids when it comes to being kind, um, helping people out, sharing, just being nice to other people and just being loving and stuff like that. A majority of that comes from the Bible. But anyways, let's go ahead and get right into these uh, newscasts and see exactly what they're talking about. Well, right now, Texas is at the center of the battle over religion in public schools. Minutes ago, the state's Board of Education approved a new and controversial curriculum for elementary schools that includes teachings from the Bible. This is all part of a larger trend of Republican-led states making moves to incorporate the Bible in public school education. NBC News correspondent Antonia Hilton joins me now. So, Antonia, let's talk about what exactly is in this new curriculum for Texas public schools. How does the Bible factor into it? Well, Vicki, it changes from year to year. So initially for very young children, they're going to learn about things like the golden rule or some of the parables and uh, speeches essentially that Jesus gave in the Bible. And then it will transform a bit as kids get older. So in fifth grade, for example, they start to learn about Juneteenth, the famous holiday when slaves were freed in Texas. But they'll learn about how former President Abraham Lincoln was a Christian and it was Christianity that guided his decision making. For people who who are concerned about this, which actually includes Democrats and Republicans who've raised concerns. They say that it infuses Christianity in places where it isn't necessary, and that it also does that at times at the expense of other faiths, that it could make kids who don't identify as Christians feel left out or like they're not as important to this country. Take a listen to one person who's concerned about this. I love the Bible. I think that the Bible should be read and studied, uh, but it's not the job of public schools to be indoctrinating young children uh, through the teaching of Bible stories when they should be teaching reading and language art. Hmm. And that's a lot of the concern that we heard from both sides. It was a very narrow majority that passed this, Vicki. What do supporters say about that very concern about excluding? It's one thing to teach you know, just being kind to other people, sure, right? And can they do that on top of teaching, reading, writing, math, all the things that they are supposed to be teaching um, without making other kids feel excluded? Well, that's going to be the question that essentially is going to be tested in these schools yeah. now. But the supporters say that, look, Christianity is important, that many of our leaders are and have been Christians, and so it's only right to learn about this. Take a listen to one of them. Students have the First Amendment right to learn uh, these Bible lessons or Bible references that are in the English language arts materials. Um, there's so many required readings uh, that you know, for high school and college that come from the Bible as well, such as Paradise Lost or Dante's Inferno. Shakespeare quotes the Bible as well. And look, this is happening in Texas now, but we are very likely going to see other movements like this come to other states very soon. And likely to see lawsuits over it all too. That's right. Antonio. In a narrow eight to seven vote, the Texas State Board of Education approved an optional English language arts and reading curriculum for elementary schools Friday morning. The topic has been generating controversy over the last few months are having biblical lesson plans. The Blue Bonnet Learning Curriculum in English Language Arts created by the Texas Education Agency will be optional for school districts across the state, but it has sparked a heated discussion over its constitutionality. As critics say, it alludes to Christianity significantly more than other religions. It's just a matter of time somebody is going to sue these uh, Texas Board of Education or a state of Texas establishment clause was created to give the American population religious freedom and that government should not be responsible to promote or prohibit any religion. Professor Zing explains that at the heart of debates between critics and proponents of blue bonnet learning is the establishment clause of the U.S. Constitution intended to separate church and state. Representatives of local student unions from some of El Paso's largest school districts worry this new curriculum is an overreach. The curriculum might be trying to push a particular faith or a particular religion because that is not our responsibility. That is That belongs to the family. And so I think that um, implementing this would alienate, you know, um, some students possibly some teachers. Um, it could it could affect even um, teacher recruitment and teacher retention if they're, you know, forced to have to um, teach this curriculum. So I see what the women are saying. I see exactly what they're saying. And this is looking from, because you guys know that when it comes to Christianity and teaching the word, I'm about it. You'll see it in my TikToks, you'll see it on my Instagrams, and you'll see it in some of my videos. I'm about expressing the truth 
to everybody and seeing how the faith is supposed to be lived like. It's supposed to be a lifestyle. It's supposed to be a relationship between you and God. It's not supposed to be just something that you do on the weekends or routine and stuff like that. And I think that's one of the biggest concerns that I have because when it comes to teaching the gospel, it has to be coming from a, a source that is passionate and that truly believes in what they're teaching. You're not gonna go to a college campus and then sit in the classroom and be taught physics, be taught math, be taught uh, uh, psychology, language arts, and the teacher isn't passionate and truly believes in what it is that they're teaching. So in such a way, it's gonna be tough for you to just say that we're going to be teaching the Bible now in the school system, in the elementary school system, when I know for sure you have Muslim teachers, you have Hindu teachers, you have Jewish teachers, you have atheist teachers, and now you're telling them that they're gonna to have to teach this. Now it's optional, but the question is to what degree is option oh it's optional for the schools to do it that doesn't mean that it's optional for the teachers to teach it so that's going to be an interesting event for the teachers in regards to how they're going to respond to that and then on top of that is going to be an interesting event on the parents on how they're going to respond to that you got parents that again like the lady said they're going to feel May, they're based off of their religion, they may feel left out. Why can't my religion be expressed or taught more in the schools and such? But again, when we look at it from a predated view, you look at a lot of the morals that we have, they come from the Christian faith. Again, the Europeans that came from Europe and came over here, they also brought in their religious belief that comes, that comes from the Bible and in such, they take on such morals, such values use into their day to day. And a lot of it has helped build America to who it is today. A lot of great people follow Christian values. You may not like Christian people, which is absolutely fine because again, we're human. You're not supposed to base everything off of the humans. You're supposed to base it off of the word, off of the God that we believe in. And then my response to that, when it comes to people not wanting the Christian faith to be taught in the schools, is like when you look at it this way, if we're basing our beliefs off of being a good person loving other people not trying to oppress other people not lying not cheating not stealing all this type of stuff why wouldn't you want to expand on the source in which it's coming from in which this country got this like expand more on the source this is real learning of how in a sense how america was kind of brought up but also diving deeper into the history of the word but on that same token again with me personally, well, kind of looking at it from an outside stance, you see Christianity as a faith, but you have to know the whole Bible. You can't just focus on the New Testament or the Old Testament. Uh, well, in a lot of cases, you know, teachings of Jesus and stuff. You kind of got to be able to see everything as a whole and not just in segments. But again, you have to be fully uh, committed to what you're teaching and passionate about what you're teaching or else it's going to be a lot of drop-offs. And when it comes to the faith, it, it kind of gives me the vibes of just the religion, the routine, the tradition, and not really trying to build that relationship with God through Jesus who died for us. And that's kind of where I'm like, yeah, I'm not sure if this is the best idea, not even in terms of the greed and putting in the money and stuff like that, but in terms of are these kids really going to accept Jesus the way that they need to or is it just kind of be an indoctrinating thing where it's just this taught in schools but the person that's teaching you isn't even really into it themselves so then at that point i don't know it's just a lot of weird stuff so going into the weird stuff what we're gonna do now i got a couple of tiktok videos we're just gonna see what these people are talking about their perspective and all that so let's see what they got i am so excited because today the texas board of education has approved a new k-5 curriculum that is going to incorporate the bible into its K-5 education materials. So excited. So I have compiled my favorite lessons that I'm really hopeful that Texas public school students are going to get to learn as a minister who serves in Texas. The first thing that I think would be really, really great for kids to focus on is Exodus 22 and then we have verses 20 through 26, but kind of roughly, it is a God will hear the cry of the poor and the vulnerable and they should not be oppressed. 
that comes from the Hebrew Bible. So Christians call that the Old Testament. Um, but we don't want to just focus on the Old Testament because we are Christians. So we're going to go into the Gospels, which is the accounts in the Bible that we have of the life of Jesus, which is who Christians believe came as God's son. And we have blessed are the poor for theirs is the kingdom of God. That is Luke 6. 20 or the Sermon on the Mount. But we don't want to have to rely on those because, you know, they could, they could not be literal accounts. But we do have the epistles at the end of the New Testament, which show us that the earliest church and the letters that folks were writing back and forth to one another. So we have, but if anyone has the world's goods, sees his brother in need and yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him and that is from the epistle of first john 3 17. the thing is all schools are not going to have to do this but for the schools that do elect to do this those schools will receive 60 dollars per child that is enrolled in the school right so let's do a little math so let's say the school has 600 kids times 60 that's thirty six thousand dollars that they're going to be getting to that school well tisha that's a good thing because maybe the money would go towards you know the teachers getting more pay it's not <laughs> they're doing everything to the educational system except talking about giving the teachers more pay they're doing everything except talking about using money to give teachers things that they need in order to be able to educate these kids properly. Right? And just think about it. They're selling our kids souls for $60. They're, they're, they're purchasing their influence for $60. That's all they, they feel that they're worth. They think that if they dangle money in the face, they do not desire to make America great again. They desire to make America ca -ca great again. To give the power back to a certain group of individuals. And they are targeting and doing this to the kids on purpose, the next generation. If they can influence the next generation, then they will have the power. And we as adults and parents have got to start focusing on what is important, which is the next generation. We've got to speak up and we've got to educate ourselves on the options and the things that are going on in our community. That definitely puts things into perspective when it comes to the whole indoctrinating um, and teaching these kids. And like she said, her reasoning, of course, is different from mine, but it's similar to like I was saying earlier, you can't just have anybody preaching the word. She clearly... Uh, Based on what she's saying, I'm making the assumption in a context clues that she's not entirely of the faith, but the concern still stays the same. Who's teaching what? What are they teaching and who's teaching it? If you're going to be preaching somebody the gospel, then you need to have the heart to preach the gospel at that point isn't even really preaching the gospel but teaching the literature in the bible and what it's saying but even then some things can be taken out of context so it's definitely a slippery slope and the more i think about it the more i'm like yeah i don't know if this is the best this comment over here is very interesting i cut out some of it well i'm cutting out some of it but it says and who is teaching these studies because it's already bad that we hear complaints about unqualified teachers yeah okay everybody ain't qualified to preach the bible and i'm gonna go ahead and like that because that's just straight up if you're not believing what you're teaching to begin with why would you, anything that you're teaching, especially something important as the Bible, why would we want people that don't care for the Bible or people that aren't the best teachers anyways, but they're just in the school system because maybe they got a degree or whatever to teach something that's so important, which like she said, her, their, the kids' souls. Again, her reasoning is a little different from mine, but at the end of the day, these are the souls that we're influencing with this Bible. In the Bible, as we've seen plenty of times, humans misuse it. So I'm not too sure about this. Let's keep going. It looks like the state of Texas is well on its way to incorporating the Bible in everyday school teachings. 
Yesterday, the Texas School Board voted in favor in an 8-7 to vote for adding this new Bible-infused curriculum for kindergarten through 5th grade. They're stating this curriculum would be optional. However, schools would receive extra funding if they opted to use it. What they would do is when they are teaching a lesson, like let's say on the Golden Rule, they would then reference a Bible verse and use that as an example. The curriculum has been called fundamentally flawed because it heavily focuses on the Christian faith and leaves other traditions out. Yesterday, over 100 individuals met to either testify for or against this new curriculum. Here's what a few of them had to say. A Texas union that represents over 60,000 public school educators said this. The material clearly violates the separation of church and state, and it violates their academic freedom and the sanctity of the teaching profession. A woman of Jewish faith spoke and said that her grandchildren, they practice her traditions and her religion, and she doesn't need anybody coming in to teach them how to be a Christian. Somebody needs to stop the government from moving ahead with this. Others simply stated that just because they're teaching about Christianity doesn't mean it's going to force a child to be a Christian. Others also argue this will give a more holistic way of teaching and applying life to the Bible. And it's interesting that she says that because there's been a lot of stuff and a lot of changes that's have been happening over the past four years in the school system that a lot of people aren't okay with yet they're still at the school now this again way more important on both sides is going to be way more important on those on the on the religious aspect of it but at the same time when it comes to actually saving these kids souls it's again important that it's not just anybody that's teaching this stuff but yeah to her point yeah there seems to be a lot of uproar but there was a lot of stuff that's happening that forced a lot of people to switch schools so it's kind of weird how initially it was the left pushing their agenda of gender affirmation, the pronouns and, and all that stuff. And then all of the unwanted sexual content that was putting in them in the books that were in the elementary schools and whatnot. People did not want these things. And a lot of people don't know about these things because they were just thrown in there. But now we're here at the other side where Texas and other education systems are trying to incorporate the Bible, which a lot of people feel indifferent about it. It's kind of like the tables have turned. The tables have turned. Interesting enough, we still got more. Absolutely unbelievable. This just in, Texas will be the first state to implement Bible-based curriculum in our public schools. It passed eight to seven by a Republican-led Board of Education here in Texas. Eight to seven. So on top of our teachers having to be protectors because we can't find any common ground to protect our kids in schools from a gunman, they now have to be pastors and priests to teach Bible-based curriculum when they have no time to teach math or science, severely underfunded and underpaid, and now they're going to be pastors. What is going on? And it's optional, yes, but like I said, they're underfunded and they're incentivizing them at $40 a pop per each kid. I believe in The Board of Education just officially approved adding lessons from the Bible to the school curriculum. Reaching out to educational leaders in the state, speaking at public hearings, and people feel very intensely uh, and powerfully about this. You know, for the advocates who wanted this change in curriculum, they believe that Christianity is fundamental to the history of the United States uh, and that learning about it will help children with their moral development and help them with their scores, uh, their learning overall. And then a kind of bipartisan group of both Democrats and Republicans say that, look, even for those of them who identify as Christians who love the Bible, they don't think school is an appropriate place to give kids sermons. I mean, that's some of what's going to be there. They're going to learn about some of Jesus' sermons. Uh, when they learn about Juneteenth, for example, they're going to learn about Abraham Lincoln being a Christian and how Christianity played a role in the decision to free slaves. Now, some would say, well, that's not really what Juneteenth, the holiday, is about. We should be focused on maybe the experiences of the, ins the formerly enslaved. Um, uh, and that's a key part of this debate here. A new law in Oklahoma states that you have to teach the Bible in school. And I don't know if they fully thought that through because you're going to end up with a lot of atheist teachers teaching the Bible, which means there's going to be a lot of critical readings of the text. Ironically, the people who really want their kids to know the Bible would probably much rather a pastor or a church teaches their children about the Bible. 
Because when these teachers start doing critical readings of the Bible, when they start teaching the stories that are in there, the way that they were written, it's not going to be like Sunday school. You're going to end up with kids who have a lot of questions for their parents, for their pastors, and their parents are going to be like, oh, they're not teaching it right, but they are. They will be teaching it right. And then you're going to have people going to the legislature and being like, you need to mandate how this is taught. You need to tell them how to interpret the text because they don't want it to be treated like literature. They want religion to be taught in school. But religion is the interpretation and the application of the text. Religion is not the text itself. The text is literature and literature can be criticized. Literature is looked at in its cultural and historical context and dissected. So the next thing they'll try to do is to dictate how the text must be interpreted Mm -hmm. in schools. The problem there is that it's interpreted a million different ways by a million mm -hmm. congregations. And as soon as you have a governing body telling you this is the correct interpretation of the text, you are now curtailing your freedom of religion. You are suddenly no longer allowed to interpret the text yourself as a Christian. This is a huge area that people who want Christian nationalism don't think about. As soon as Christianity becomes a part of the government, the government then gets to decide what Christianity looks like. And suddenly Christians have voted away their own ability to interpret their own text. And that's going to be honestly the very interesting part in all of this. Who's teaching this? We have to be on one accord because you can't be in one school learning the Bible. And then you talk to your friend that's at another school and they're learning the Bible a completely different way because it's only one Bible. All the text in the Bible is the same and it hasn't changed for generations. So this is something that, again, I don't feel like is probably the best idea, but that's just my opinion y'all let me know in the comments what y'all think is this a good idea i'm going 10 toes down and saying that this is going to end up terribly and exactly what the last guy said there's a lot that's going to be missing even with everybody what they're saying here they're taking this as a religion and christianity is not just some simple religion this is a relationship that you have with our father god it's the belief of that Jesus died for us and that our salvation comes from believing that. And when you become a true Christian, you're filled with the Holy Spirit and you live a life trying to be more like Christ who was blameless and do what we can in this earth to preach the gospel to other people while living in such a holy life of the fruit of the spirit, being faithful, being kind, being loving, having self-control and all these things. There's a lot that goes into it. Yes, you can throw in a couple of verses. I mean, honestly, if they just want to do the 10 commandments, I feel like you can do that and not cause any type of issues to where, like he was saying, the government would have to be more involved because things would have to be mandated and uniform and stuff. But when it comes to actually teaching of the Bible, there's so much that goes, there's just so much that goes into it. You can't just read the New Testament and think that you understand who God is because God really shows himself in the Old Testament. You see who God has been in the Old Testament. We can't just take things from the Old Testament because Jesus came and he didn't remove the things of the Old Testament, but he's provided a new outlet for us to be able to see to be able to reach that salvation that the people of the old testament weren't able to get especially all the other people that were just there and unknown of who god was and then from a worldly perspective you're just going to have a lot of kickback from people of the lgbtq community if you're going to be talking about genesis and now there's a man and a woman and then all the other times in the old testament and a new in leviticus and the apostle paul and timothy speaking on man and woman and how homosexuality is a sin and stuff like that there's just so much that goes into it that honestly could be a very big problem it could be a very big problem if not taught correctly but again you're you're going into these schools where honestly i think texas is mostly republican but in a lot of school system you have a lot of liberal people that aren't okay with the bible but you're gonna force them to have to teach the bible if their school is going to go on with the program I don't know if that's the best idea. But anyways, you guys comment below. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all comment, like the video, hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. And to see more videos as soon as they come out, go ahead and hit that bell. I'm going to catch you on the next one. Take it easy. Peace.